there really isn't much of a point in me posting this. A call into an echoless void, I suppose. One that cannot garnish a response. I, after a little over 100 hours now, have drunk the last energy drink, swallowed the last Adderall. When the crash comes to collect, I won't be able to fill the bucket and mop the walls. Barely managed to finish the ceiling this past time, before my legs failed me. So here I am writing it out, how I fucking died. Started about a month ago when I was promoted. I got called up from the mailroom. At the time, I thought I was going to be let go. Instead, I met with Miss Mora, head of the R&D department at the Slack Tear Chemical Corp. She told me they had decided to promote from within, moving me somewhere my degree could get put out to work. Training videos. That's the first thought that crossed my mind. What else could a film degree be used for at a chemical company? Miss Moreau went on and on about how I would love the new team. She led me into a lab. Inside were three others. Adam, he was a chemical engineer from some fancy school, working on his PhD. The next was someone I knew, Imani. She was a chemist and my parking neighbor. Lastly, was a tall, stout, middle-aged man, Dr. Fleisch. Following introductions, they explained that I would record everything they deemed relevant and would later transcribe it. Ms. Muro went on to hand me a stack of papers, a contract which contained both an NDA and a non-compete agreement. I signed it as soon as I saw the pay increase, almost triple my mailroom pay. They said I'd even get acknowledged for the project. Ms. Mura and Dr. Fleisch started to leave with my contract. Before she went through the door, she turned and told me I could ask Adam and Amani what the project was. So I did. Smiles crept onto their faces before saying in unison, Chuck. From this point forward, I will be adding in some of the transcriptions. It saves time. I should have started writing days ago. Anything important, as far as I can tell, I'll include. Most of the first week was spent obtaining new recording gear, making an editing bay in a corner of the lab, and showing all of them how to turn on microphones. Dr. Fleisch refused to wear a microphone, so I used a camera-mounted shotgun mic as well. Day 8. Fleisch. Hello, I am Dr. Ali Fleisch. I am here in our lab. To my left are my assistants. Manning the camera is our new documentarian. And this, he picked up a small black box, is Fleisch slack tear chalk. For legal reasons, I will not go into how it is made. However, it is more similar to phosphorus than to calcium carbonate. After showing the chalk to the camera, he instructed me to film Amani putting the chalk through various tests. First, it was water, then boiling water, then oil, then boiling oil and several kinds of acid. Hydrochloric, nitric, sulfuric, and so on. Imani. As you can see so far, the chalk reacts to almost nothing, but with the help of Adam here, we will demonstrate another interesting factor. She handed the chalk piece to Adam, who subsequently threw it at a wall. When he brought it back, he held it in front of the camera. Adam. You can't break this shit. Imani hit Adam on the shoulder. Imani. The chalk cannot be broken. We will further show this with various tests. Eric, please edit out Adam's profanity. We need to be taken seriously. At that point, I didn't understand. I had a few questions during our lunch break. What would be the point of chalk that couldn't break? It wouldn't be able to write. And if it was truly unbreakable, why make chalk with it? They started rambling on about the chalk. Almost all of it went over my head, but I came away with a few things. One, you can use it to write, which led to a follow-up question about erasure. Adam informed me that it could be wiped away with water once it was written with, and it couldn't write on wet surfaces. Two, it naturally held the shape of a typical chalk stick when made. Of course, there was some variation, but the six pieces made so far Average out at about 9 millimeters in diameter and 80 millimeters in length. I did not know why. 
as they didn't know how to make it. Only Dr. Fleisch did. Three. I would soon find out that it being unbreakable was the least interesting thing about the chuck. The rest of the day and the ones that followed it were spent mostly on tests trying to break it. The hydraulic press had no effect. Neither did the table saw. Two high-powered winches, a blowtorch, and even a gun. For that test, Miss Mura brought in a large man from the security team. He had brought a large rifle. I didn't know much about guns, but it shot bolts the length of my phone. If I hadn't been there and only saw the footage, I would have thought it to be special effects. It just didn't make any sense. The chalk weighed almost nothing. You know, like, how chalk is supposed to weigh. But whatever test they ran, it wouldn't break. Day 14. Fleisch. What I am about to demonstrate might quite possibly be the most important discovery in the history of mankind. We have already demonstrated the strength of the FS chalk, but now we will demonstrate its true purpose. He turned behind him and strode to a large blackboard that went from floor to ceiling. It took everything at that moment for me not to burst out laughing as I followed him with the camera. Indestructible chalk. Truly a monumental step forward for mankind. I'm sure he knew what I was feeling right now. Adam and Amani probably felt the same way before seeing it. Fleisch. Please observe. He began to draw a large circle on the blackboard. As soon as it was complete, the inside of the circle turned a different shade of black. No, it wasn't just the color. The wall inside the circle was gone. A hole had replaced it. White particles floated around inside the hole. The space beyond the circle stretched endlessly. Fleisch. Eric, I know this is your first occasion witnessing this, but please do keep the camera steady. As you can see, when a complete circle is made with the chalk, it opens up a hole into what we assume is another dimension. As of now, this is the beginning of our documentation exploring said dimension. We will be running various tests, working our way up to entering it ourselves. The recording didn't pick up the constant hum that came from the void. When Dr. Fleisch sprayed the wall with water, the chalk circle broke. Just as fast as it had come, it vanished. I ran up and touched the wall. It was solid. In such a short time, I had gone from the office mailman to a small part of a monumental discovery. Dr. Fleisch left the room and instructed me to clean the wall and start downloading the day's footage. Imani and Adam basically tackled me when he left the lab. Imani... See, this is why we didn't tell you. You had to see it. You would have thought we were yanking your chain. Adam. Isn't it so fucking cool? That night I had my first dream of the void. I was in the lab by myself. The circle was humming. Papers were scattered around the floor. A spilled coffee cup was on one of the tables. My camera was on the ground. Day 16. This was the day we really began testing the void. At first, it was little things. Imani threw in a coin. We heard it bounce. Adam tossed a brick. We heard it break. They concluded there was ground within the void. Next, Imani used a meter stick to search for a ceiling. She found none. Adam brought over a small drone. Its battery died without ever finding a surface above the entrance. Five minutes had passed before the drone crashed into the ground. We lost a few more drones, none to connection loss, just the same situation each time for each direction. Fleisch. This will conclude day one of the testing inside the dimension. Following this day, they ramped up the technology used for the test. I don't even know what most of the tools or sensors they used were. The only way I could really explain was basically a flashlight, except Adam built it. It hooked up to a generator and was about the size of a mini fridge. I think we all would have been blind if we hadn't been wearing welding goggles. The room was lit up completely, but in the void, it hadn't changed at all. I dreamt of the void again, but this time I left the lab. Only the emergency lights were on in the hallway. I made my way to the break room, but the door wouldn't budge. Day 24. Fleisch. This will be our final test before human exploration. Imani, help me with the rats. 
One by one, they set twenty small cages into the void using a robotic arm. This wasn't the first time we had placed living things in the void. We started with plants, then a rat, then a cat, and then a monkey. But now we were back to rats. Adam had asked what happens if we left a living creature in the void after breaking the circle. Fleisch decided that would be the final test before he was going to go in. I don't like rats, but I couldn't help but feel squeamish, watching them set those cages down. When Adam broke the circle, silence washed over the room. The hum of the void had left us. We waited for five minutes. It felt much longer. Then Fleisch drew another circle, and there they were, unharmed as far as I could tell. Fleisch. Alright, let's get them out. Imani, Eric, Adam, take these to Lab 4. Dr. Brunson is going to run some tests on them. See if the dimension had any effect on the rats. Tonight's dream was different. I could see myself. I was asleep in my car. I guess it's good news that I stopped dreaming of the void. Day 27. It took a few days, but the rats had not been affected. When I came into the lab, Fleisch was in a hazmat suit. He was talking to Miss Mura in the corner of the room. Imani and Adam were drinking coffee by their desks. I set up the camera and audio equipment, and once it was set up, Fleisch gathered us around. Fleisch. I started down this path alone. When I first discovered the chalk years ago, I was not able to make enough of it. But then Miss Mura found me. She gave me back to pursue my destiny. Helping along the way, expanding the team and resources we had access to. You are a part of history now, but the next length of the path, I must go alone at first. I promise you I will share this experience as soon as I can, with all of you. Then we will share it with the world. Imani. Thank you, Dr. Fleisch. We can't wait. Adam. Kick ass. I can't wait to take a selfie in there. I'm gonna get so many likes on the gram. Mura. Well, I think I speak for more than myself when I say this, but we are all very proud of you, Jonas. That includes everyone from the board especially. As far as speeches go, it's better than anything I would have been able to come up with. I don't really want to go into the void. I'm glad we are nearing the end of the project. Can't be much more to film after he goes in there. Dr. Fleisch gave a sturdy hug to Miss Mura, then Amani. Adam and I got handshakes and pats on the back. It was time. Imani had double-checked everything. He had enough oxygen to last a few hours. The suit was airtight, and a small camera was mounted on his shoulder. He took a sip of water before setting down his glass and having Adam seal his helmet. We all watched as Dr. Fleisch climbed through the circle. The last part of him on our side was his right hand. He was gripping the side of the circle when it happened. I was checking audio levels and missed it, but the humming stopped. Imani screamed. Miss Mura rushed towards the wall, and Adam yelled fuck. On the ground was about half of Dr. Fleisch's gloved hand, severed at the palm. I couldn't breathe. I watched as Imani tried to draw another circle, but the chalk broke. The very same piece of chalk that we couldn't break no matter what we tried snapped in her hands. Imani... Where are the other pieces? Adam, fucking hell. He's in there and he's hurt. How the fuck did the circle close? There was no water. Where are the other pieces? Adam. I don't know. I don't know. He always brings them out. Miss Mura, do you have any idea? We could hear Miss Mura screaming from down the hall. She must have slipped out as soon as the chalk broke. We found her in Dr. Fleisch's office. The safe below his desk was empty. The black box which he kept his chalk was not there. Others had come from the neighboring labs to find out what was going on. Dr. Brunson, the biologist, was the first to ask what was going on. It took a while for everything to settle down. As far as Miss Mura could tell, Dr. Fleisch either hid the chalk somewhere else or took it inside with him. It was his life's work after all. I was told to go home. Everyone else was going to try and make new chalk from the notes found in Dr. Fleisch's safe. After packing up all my gear, I stumbled out the parking lot and sat in my car. I couldn't drive. I couldn't just leave when no one else was. So I waited and waited. 
I ended up falling asleep. When I woke, it was 4 a.m. I looked to my left. Monty's car was still there. I drove to the nearest Starbucks and got a round of coffee for everyone. The lights in the hallways were off, but I figured no one had bothered to turn them on. They had more important things to do. Only the emergency lights provided faint visibility. As I got closer to the lab, I could hear the familiar hum of the void. This was the first time I felt happy to hear that fucking sound. I swung the door open expecting to see everyone cheering with an injured doctor being bandaged up. The lab was empty. The void was open. So they must have gotten him out. Taken him to a hospital. And that was where everyone was. I missed it by sleeping in my car. I checked my phone. No messages. I was going to set down the coffees when out of the corner of my eye I noticed something. My camera was out. On the ground. Facing the void. The coffees landed on my shoes. The feeling I normally had when hearing the hum returned. I picked up my camera and pressed the library button. Instead of the hours of footage from today, there were about 20 short videos. Number 1. Adam and Dr. Brunson were talking in the break room. You couldn't hear them. Whoever was filming it wasn't in the room. The only sound was their heavy, slow breath. Instead, they pointed the camera at them through the plexiglass window in the door. It looked like Adam was showing Dr. Brunson some files while they drank coffee. Number two, the security guard, the one who brought in the rifle with Miss Mura, was sitting at a desk watching monitors. He was reading on a Kindle, occasionally glancing up to look at the monitors. I saw myself on one of the monitors, asleep in my car. The guard's radio went off, and the cameraman moved behind the file cabinet. Number three, Miss Mura was on the floor in a bathroom stall. I recognized her boots. She was sobbing. She kept saying she was sorry. The cameraman moved out of the bathroom. He must have been holding his breath because it started up again as they moved down the hall. They hit around a corner before zooming in on the bathroom exit. Miss Mura then came out. She looked around. She said hello. She must have realized someone had been watching her. I headed toward the door. I needed to leave. Scanning the hallway from the door, I saw a man walking backward around a corner. As he got closer, I could see he was dragging someone. I hid under Amani's desk. Hers was the closest to the door. The door was opened awkwardly. The room filled with the rhythmic, heavy breath from the videos. The way the hum and the breathing mesh made me want to vomit. As the man passed my hiding place, I recognized the person being dragged. It was Adam. I couldn't tell if he was alive. The man dragged him over to the circle before lifting and placing him inside the void. The faint glow from the void offered me a look at the man, Dr. Fleisch. In the short time he was there, he had changed. The once stout man was a walking skeleton. His hazmat suit was gone. Most of his skin looked like tar. It festered and bubbled. The lost half of his hand had been replaced. His new fingers looked to be made out of chalk. After he left the room, I waited for a few minutes before leaving as well. When I made it back to the parking garage, I saw Amani. She must have heard me. When she spun around, her face went from terror to relief. She tried to explain the best she could, but she just ended up losing her words. I told her about the videos and what I saw. We went our separate ways. She was going to the police. I decided to give her the SD card. It wasn't much, but it was some sort of evidence. That could help. I just wanted to go home. I think that's where I fucked up. I should have gone with Imani to the police. When I returned to my apartment, all I wanted to do was sleep. An hour or two passed. I was awoken by the all-too-familiar noise of someone drawing with chalk. When I turned on my bedside lamp, I almost couldn't believe it. A chalk circle was forming on my wall. I splashed it with water. That familiar noise started again, but behind me this time. I splashed that one too. I ran for the door. The hum started outside. He was banging on the door, turning the knob. Eventually, he stopped. But then he started drawing another circle on the ceiling. I figured out my routine pretty quickly. I mopped the floors, the ceiling. 
the walls every hour on the hour. It's been four days since I came home. I haven't slept. Like I said hours ago when I started writing this, my body is tired. I can't do this anymore. I hope Imani made it. Maybe when he shows up I can bargain with him. Give him my hard drive with all the transcripts. Maybe he'll leave me alone. I'm a nobody. I worked in the mailroom. At least you guys will know I existed. But for now, I think I'm going to sleep. <laughs>